Good morning. Well, the tuition today is the sixth Sunday after Epiphany. Welcome to everyone joining us online today as well. We have a few announcements from Ellie Free this morning. Please bring your announcements on the screen. First, we ask for you to please keep uh, Norm Hoffman in your prayers. He had a procedure uh, just this last week on Friday, and he is back at home recovering now. Your prayers for healing are certainly appreciated during this time. Also, a reminder that uh, it's never too early to start thinking about camping while the new summer programming for youth. Uh, there are some upcoming deadline discounts or discount discount deadlines coming up to uh, keep in mind there if you're interested in those programs. Uh, also, a reminder that at this time of year is when Bible camps all across the country are seeking out young adults to serve as camp counselors and, and camp staff. So please keep Camp Iwalu uh, and all of our other camps in your prayers. It's an exciting uh, time as you start to put together what your summer staff is going to look like. Having been in that position, uh, I'm not envious of the amount of work and traveling that a lot of people are doing right now. Lent is right around the corner. We begin uh, the season of Lent with Ash Wednesday on March 2nd. We'll have uh, worship at 7 o'clock that evening with the imposition of ashes and Holy Communion. And then we will uh, be resuming our Lenten soup suppers again this year after a couple year break. It's good to have that time of fellowship back. So thank you to the high school youth who will be serving uh, that first Wednesday after Ash Wednesday. Also, a very quick reminder, if you're a thriving financial member, please be sure to direct your choice dollars by March 31st. Call the office if you need any help with that process. And we do have some more devotionals, pray for the day devotionals, available with those that are a free gift to you from the congregation. Please help yourself to one of those if you'd like to utilize that resource. It's a great way to start or end the day. Very short little snippets of scripture and a prayer, and even a hymn suggestion if you have an ELW at home or if you'd like to maybe take a peek one of the title catches your curiosity, you can uh, take a look at that here. Are there any other announcements for this morning? If not, I invite you to stand as you are able to uh, confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you call us well. Except for our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as free and forgiven children of God. Amen. Our gathering hymn is number 723, Canticle of the Trinity.
page 138 in the front portion of your bill. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
morning. Our faith first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in their mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness and in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. We'll read Psalm 1 responsibly. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like the chaff which is broken and blown away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord comes away from the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 20. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testify to God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. Here ends the readings. <laughs> Hello everyone, 
maybe it has to do with water, such as fishing, or swimming, or boating, or maybe it's when you're in your garden, having your hands in the soil, planting seeds, watching the flowers spring to life. Or perhaps the places in your family room and you're watching TV or the fire in the fireplace or a movie with friends or family, children or grandchildren. Maybe it's watching your favorite team play the Super Bowl. And one more question. What are those things that help you to be a happy person? What are those things or qualities that enable you to be happier and not sadder in life? Is it food, family, friends, good health, clothing, relationships, the roof over your heads, money in the bank, knowing that you're loved? All of those? Some of those? What are the things that create the recipe of happiness for you? In the translation of the Good News Bible, which we have often traditionally used in confirmation classes, the Bible says, Happy are the poor. Happy are you who hunger. Happy are you who weep. And there are maybe a total of four qualities that make for happiness. We traditionally call these the Beatitudes. In Matthew's version of the story, the sharing of these marks of happiness or blessedness takes place as a part of the Sermon on the Mount. A large crowd had gathered together down by the shore, the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Then Jesus took twelve disciples and left the crowds behind on the shore. And he and his disciples went up a little ways onto a mountain or a hillside above the sea. These hills above the Sea of Galilee are rolling large hills above the lake, not mountains like the way we might imagine them if you've ever traveled to the western United States. In Luke's version of the story, Jesus and his disciples had just come down from the hillside and were back on a level place. We get the impression that many, many more people were present for this sermon on the plain, as in the flat land. Plain, as it's referred to in Luke's Gospel. So it's, it's with this backdrop of these remote hills near to you and overlooking the Sea of Galilee, and Jesus was going to teach his newly called 12 disciples the most basic lessons about life with God. And what does Jesus teach these newly called 12 disciples? Does he teach them about prayer? or about reading the Bible, or even love or justice? No. He began with something much more basic and simple. Jesus began by teaching his newly called disciples about happiness, the simplicities of happiness. All people, all people, right, are interested in happiness. I think most people in today's world want to know about happiness. We all want it and look for it and try and find it. And so Jesus begins his teachings by giving us a blueprint for happiness. But again, thinking about translations of the passage, Jesus didn't necessarily use that word happiness either. Blessedness in the NRSV, like we read today, happiness in the Good News translation. But the original Greek text would probably be better served if, if the word joy was used. And this perhaps muddles things a little bit. Because you can be joyful and unhappy at the same time, right? Think about that. You can be joyful and yet unhappy at the same time. You can be joyful even in the midst of unhappy circumstances. Because joy has to do with the Spirit of God living inside of you. It has to do with that smile of God living in your heart. Joy is the assurance that God is with you through all circumstances. It is knowing that in all circumstances of life, both the good and the bad, that God is with you and will always see you through and take care of you. It is knowing that God has redemption and forgiveness for you, 
even when the circumstances are unhappy. And the result is that you can be joyful even during unhappy circumstances. Jesus took his newly called disciples up onto the hillside to pray and back down again with the crowds to teach them about its core values. And Jesus began his teachings with that which was held most dear to his heart, joy. Today we talk about the Beatitudes, we talk about joy, true joy, not happiness that is dependent on circumstances or even blessedness, which can seem to be a misunderstood term in our culture today. So do you hear Jesus' words differently when the word joy is used? The word that assures us that God is with us and that redemption and forgiveness are promised to us? Joyful are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Joyful are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Joyful are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Joyful are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, weep for joy. For surely your reward is going to be heaven. Do you sense that the deeper significance when the word joy is used? Happiness and even blessedness have become words that you know, we hear often in songs on the radio or in conversation, but joy, at least to me, still seems to hold a special place in our vocabulary, a place of significance reserved for the most exceptional, deeply meaningful moments of life. It's a word that we don't just seem to throw around or overuse because there's something different, there's something significant, there's something heavier about it. But Jesus took his newly called disciples up onto that hillside, prayed with them, and returned to that level place among his many followers. He taught those essentials, those fundamentals, those core aspects of his teachings. He taught them joy. About that inner quality of the heart that comes from knowing God and walking with God. He said, joyful are those who work for peace. Joyful are those who mourn. Joyful are those who hunger for justice and righteousness. Beyond happiness, beyond blessedness, as the world describes it, may we strive to live into these values with pure, true, Christ-given joy. The joy that Christ alone instills in our hearts. Amen.
confess our faith using the words of the Apostle. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the Church, the world, and all that God has made. Blessed are those whose trust is in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name, and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your Church, speak continued blessings into this world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace, hear our prayer. Search the hearts of those who govern them, that they lead with humility. Inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet. Sustain truth tellers and social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace, hear our prayer. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer or are ill this day, especially remembering Norm. God of grace, hear our prayer. Renew this congregation in our shared mission. As we plan the future you are preparing, inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. God of grace, Christ is raised from the dead, and so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who have lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, Lord, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another. to receive this morning's offering.
Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table. Nourish us with the heavenly food of your word and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our light. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our ascending hymn is number 733, Great is Thy Faithfulness. <coughs>